Hi guys, Rachel Cook, Doctor of Audiology at Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you how the color of noise that you use for sound therapy might just make a difference in how well it works to reduce your tinnitus. Coming up. If you have tinnitus, you're not alone. Nearly 750 million people worldwide experience this ringing, buzzing, or humming sound that isn't actually present in your environment. Tinnitus is one of the most prevalent medical symptoms across the globe, mostly because it can be caused by nearly anything. This includes hearing loss, head and neck injuries, TMJ disorder, stress, anxiety, and depression, and is also a side effect of hundreds of over-the-counter and prescription medications. Now, I've already done deep dives into plenty of potential tinnitus management options, including hearing aids, CBD, acupuncture, and more, and you can check out each one of these videos that will be linked in the description below for you to look at after this video. But perhaps the most widely recommended and widely available tinnitus management strategy is the use of sound therapy. Now, for a more detailed explanation, you'll definitely wanna check out this video for all of the do's and don'ts of effective sound therapy. In a nutshell, sound therapy is the use of interesting, pleasant, or background sounds to reduce tinnitus perception. While it might sound counterintuitive at first, tinnitus is actually most noticeable in quiet environments. This is because there's nothing really in the environment to keep the auditory system busy and distracted. Sound therapy aims to return sound to otherwise quiet settings. This gives the ears something to hear and the brain something to process rather than generating its own internal sound signals, aka tinnitus. But not all sound therapy options are created equal. For instance, TV, music, or podcasts might work in some settings, but could prove too distracting for focused work or trying to sleep. Soothing sounds such as ocean waves, a crackling fire, or spa music work great for many people but because these tend to have patterns and rhythms, they can also be a bit too distracting for some situations. This brings us to background sounds, which are really just the sounds of regular everyday life. The air conditioner blowing in your car or your washing machine running in the other room add some nice sound conditioning during the day, which can really help to reduce the awareness of your tinnitus. But many people struggle with trying to find ways to incorporate these types of sounds into other settings, like your bedroom at night. For this reason, many people choose to use sound generators like tabletop speakers or even headphones that play sound therapy tracks from smartphone apps. And if you use one of these sound therapy apps, you may find that there are different color options for noise. These include white, pink, brown or red, green, blue, even violet. So just what makes these colors of noise different and of course, which one is best to help reduce your tinnitus? Well, we're just about to dive into all that and more, but if you could please take a moment to give this video a thumbs up, it really helps bring videos like these to a wider audience. And while you're at it, if you have not yet hit that subscribe button with notification bell, make sure you do that too so that you never miss any one of our newly released videos. Now, let's start things off with arguably the most popular and widely recognized color of noise, which is white noise. White noise is really just equal sound energy across frequencies, resulting in a TV static type of shushing. White noise has been proven in research to improve sleep, mostly by reducing the impact of sudden noises from your environment, like the hustle and bustle of a busy street outside your apartment window. It's also used a lot to keep babies asleep and to avoid them waking up to any sort of sudden noises in their environment. White noise has also been shown to reduce tinnitus perception and help those with attention disorders improve on tasks involving working memory and focused attention. And while it can be super effective at reducing tinnitus for some, for me personally, I don't find it soothing at all and it truthfully just sounds like nails on a chalkboard. If you feel similarly and white noise just doesn't seem to provide you the reduction in tinnitus that you're looking for, just know you've got other options. The first is pink noise, which has more power in the low pitches and less power in the high pitches. This tends to sound a bit smoother and more balanced than white noise. Pink noise has a shushing or rushing water type of sound quality to it and is often found in many nature sounds like ocean waves, 
steady rainfall, and rustling leaves. Many people find that the slight reduction in the higher pitches in pink noise tend to provide a bit more calming and soothing of a background sound. And research has proven that it can not only help you fall asleep faster, but it can also help to improve the quality of your sleep, which I know a lot of us could use. Next up is brown noise, otherwise known as brownian noise or red noise. This is another common choice, and it's really just pink noise 2.0, with even more power in those low pitches and even less power in those higher pitches than pink noise. This is more similar to the grumble of thunder or a distant waterfall and is used in a variety of settings, including relaxation, meditation, and of course, for falling asleep. This happens to be my preferred sound therapy option because to me, it provides the same benefits of white noise, but is much deeper in pitch. Therefore, I find it much easier and much more soothing to listen to over longer periods of time. Research studies have even suggested that brown noise can help to soothe your nervous system and even reduce blood pressure, making it arguably one of the more therapeutic colors of noise. On the flip side of the spectrum, there is blue noise and violet noise, which have much less energy in those low pitches and much more energy in those high pitches. These colors of noise can really be compared to the hiss of like a broken air hose, which to many people is pretty annoying. But while there are mixed results about the effect of blue and violet noise on relaxation, several research studies have found a positive impact on attention and productivity. In fact, the high pitch emphasis of both blue and violet noise might be more effective in reducing your tinnitus if you also have a high-pitched hearing loss. This high-frequency weighting could help to provide extra high-pitch sound and help overcome the hearing loss in those regions by providing stimulation to those areas. And finally, we end this lesson on the colors of noise with green noise. Green noise has much more power in the mid-frequency region rather than being weighted more towards the lower pitches or the higher pitches. Now, I will say that green noise is a relatively new concept and hasn't really been well studied yet, but anecdotal information online suggests that green noise could really serve as the noise version of a weighted blanket, helping to calm and soothe and regulate your nervous system. One theory for this is that the first sounds heard in the womb center around about 500 hertz, which is also the frequency that green noise tends to center around. The theory is that this could really help you tap into those early subconscious memories of safety and security and comfort while being formed which if true would be really, really cool. But the research on this is pretty limited. And to be honest, pretty much every point of research that I looked into when studying the impacts of these different colors of noise were frankly all over the place. For that reason, the best thing you can do for your tinnitus is to try out each one of these colors of different noise and use them in different environments. Based on the research, you should find that some of these colors of noise can not only help to reduce your tinnitus perception, but can also help to improve your attention and productivity, which could be really helpful while you're working. Alternatively, you'll find that other colors of noise can really help to promote rest and relaxation and should be used to help reduce tinnitus perception when you're ready to wind down for the evening. Remember that no matter what color of noise you find is best to reduce your tinnitus perception, it should always be played at a blending or mixing volume. This volume should be similar in level to your tinnitus perception, but it should not cover up your tinnitus entirely. A blending volume forces your brain to switch its attention between your tinnitus perception and the surrounding sound. Over the long term, this can really help you adapt to your tinnitus rather than just relying on noise to help you drown it out. To try out some of these different colors of noise, as well as many other sound therapy tracks, from Amazon Jungle to a cat purring or even clothes tumbling in the dryer, I highly suggest the app White Noise Free, which has a ton of great options. And if you really wanna geek out, I do suggest trying out this fun website that I will have linked in the description below where you can become a noise artist and curate your own perfect tinnitus soundtrack. 
Finally, if you have new or worsening tinnitus, especially that is worse in one ear than the other, pulses with your heartbeat, or is aligned with a change in medications or dosage, be sure to see an audiologist who specializes in tinnitus for a comprehensive tinnitus evaluation and to discuss next steps for management.